Hi friends, this is Marilyn from tarotclarity.com and today's video will be focusing on the core cards of the tarot deck. I have a few decks on the table chosen at random, um, but because I focus on TDM and PIP style decks, that's what I've got here, predominantly historic decks, a few modern decks as well. Now, interpreting the core cards have never been an, has never been an issue for me for one reason or another. They just were not problematic for me. Um, maybe I'm really lucky in that regard. But I know in teaching and I know from looking at forums and, you know, public discussion that the core cards really seem to be a problem for many people. Now, I'm personally not sure why that is, but I thought maybe if I share how I've always thought of the cards and how I learned the core cards, that it might be helpful to you as well if 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 understanding the core cards can be uh, a challenge. Now, I'm just starting with this deck randomly, and I will give the credit and the name and you know of all the decks that I'm using down below. This one is Marco Benedetti's rather modern. Um, interpretation of the Visconti Sforza decks cumulatively. Um, at any rate, uh, it's one of the, the modern, you know, TDM or, you know, tarot, TDM ref referencing either the Tarot of Marseille or Tarot of Milan. Okay, so here we have the Suit of Swords. Now, the way that I learned how to interpret or understand who these people were was a combination of a few things. The first thing I did was have an understanding of the suit. Now, I always studied tarot th through a historic lens because back in the day in the 70s, you know, when I was learning tarot, there was not the internet. There was not any, you know, I couldn't go to the bookstore and get books on tarot. Um, in fact, you know, uh, this was the first deck I ever owned. I've discussed it at length and I have a you know, and if you've been following me, you're aware of that. Um, but there wasn't a whole lot of literature on TDM. I mean, the, the only thing you could get your hands on was the Rider Waite Smith or the Waite Coleman Smith deck, right? That was the big thing, you know. And so, for a girl like me who was really attracted to, you know, a Pip style deck, there wasn't a whole lot of opportunity. And so, I what I and and I went to a museum and I saw a Visconti deck in in the museum and. Um, that really, you know, launched a, a, a quest for knowledge. And so I began to study the tarot through a historic lens of, of what the cards meant when they were created. And this is going back 70s and 80s. So it didn't mean that I studied the tarot deck. It meant that I studied medieval life in Italy to get to the core of what these cards meant. Okay, so with that in mind, the suit of swords may or may not have represented people of nobility. Now, in today's culture, we don't have people of nobility, but we have military people, right? We have people who serve us. Um, it, I associate it with the suit of air, and so I, I associate it with quick-witted thinking people. Certainly, if you fence, if you, you know, ch -ch 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 with a sword, you have to be pretty intelligent. You have to be pretty adept. You have to be very bright. Um, you may or may not be an educated individual, but you most certainly are very, very smart, you know, of your own brain power. Um, and then I would combine those attributes with the rank. Who were the valets or the pages? Well, maybe they ran errands. They certainly were people who assisted others. Um, in the workplace, if the question is about, you know, is referencing the workplace, a page could be a subordinate. Or somebody who, you know, serves. He's not the boss. She's not the boss. But it's an individual who is an assistant, maybe. Or works under you. Or works under someone else. It could also represent a very immature person who happens to be an adult, but immature. You know? Or it could represent a child. Now, it helps to know who the... It helps to identify who the individual is if you have a question. So if the question is work related, this would I would interpret it as a, a subordinate, right? If the uh, question is about a family dynamic, then this would be one of the children, um, and so on. 
okay? The knight, knights were messengers and they served the queen or the king. And uh, they were loyal individuals, right? They fought for the cause. They have a cause and they're single-minded and they wanna get something done. They want to achieve something and they will get it done. They're determined individuals. It could represent a gentleman. It could represent a woman. You know, I don't think we have to get too hung up on genders, although if you want to assign genders to um, who, who appear to be more, you know, male, um, you know, then maybe the, the, the suit of cups and the suit of coin, the pages and the knights could also represent women, but they all really can represent women. I don't get too hung up on gender. I really don't. A queen is an independent woman. She may or may not be married. She may or may not have children, but she is, you know, uh, of this suit. She is, you know, oh, and all the suits, really. The queen I just see as a woman who has, you know, reached independence. She's self-sufficient. She can take care of herself. Um, and the queen of swords, I think, is probably the most independent of all of the queens. And the king is someone who has achieved um, a lot. Uh, the kings of every suit is an individual who has achieved their rank and their, um, not, excuse me, they have achieved their, the ideal of their suit, you know. Maybe this is a, a retired, you know, gentleman of the Air Force or some type of military, or maybe this is an individual who is high ranking in, um, uh, some type of uh, authoritative position, like in the police, you know, or um, or maybe justice, you know, the sort of justice. It could be an attorney. It could be someone in, in, you know, who maybe isn't in law enforcement and maybe isn't a military individual, but maybe has something to do with the law, you know, or fairness. Um, could even be a judge, as could the queen. These are just, you know individuals who have achieved their rank, you know, for their gender, you know, but they could, they, they could both be either gender. And I, I don't get too hung up on the, the genders of any of the, of the court cards. Um, let's take a look at, let's take a look at the suit of cups. Now I've always associated the suit of cups with my understanding of looking at it through a lens and when I learned, you know, that the suit of cups may have represented the clergy, which was a thing in medieval Italy, right, as were the noble groups. Um, and of course, today we don't have, well, we do have clergy, but it's not, you know, like, it's not like a profession where people are, you know, they... It's not the same. It is a profession. It is a. It's a calling and it's a, a devotion thing. But we don't encounter many people from the clergy, um, because back in middle in the Middle Ages, you know, the clergy was actually a viable a viable profession. If you had a wealthy family, you wanted a position in the clergy because you were taken care of for the rest of your life and all that, right? Um, but in modern day. Uh, applications. The suit of cups can represent empathetic individuals, emotional individuals, right? People who are empathetic, understand others, compassionate. Um, their emotions may or may not get the better of them, <laughs> right? Um, and they may be poetic, you know, they may be, you know, they may be, you know, take pen to paper and, and, and be, you know, creative artists, you know, where they either compose music, poems, or, or drawings, you know. Okay, so then we have the page of valet, who would be either a subordinate or a youngster or an immature person with those suit characteristics, as we have with the the knight. As I said before, I think of all knights as individuals who are 
set out to pursue. They're pursuing their goals, right? They're, they have high ideals and, they're, and they, they're not who they aspire to be yet, but they're accomplishing it. Um, the pages across the board and the, and the knights across the board are assistants, right? They assist. They may be our messengers. You know, if you're waiting on news and you see one of these cards pop up, you know, there's a good chance that you'll get news. And, um, you know, for example, if it's the page of swords, maybe you'll get the news f through the phone or the internet. If it's the page of, of cups, maybe it'll be emotional news. And then, let's see, let's skip to this one for the suit of batons. And uh, one of the things that I did, now that we're on the suit of batons, it's reminding me. When I was learning and trying to, you know, be consistent with who these people were, for some reason, I glommed onto the idea that the queen of batons was a lot like Lucille Ball in her role as I Love Lucy. I don't know why, but whatever I was learning, I thought, oh, that character, this woman, is Lucille Ball in I Love Lucy. So she's highly energetic. She's fun. She's creative. Oh, she's just, you, you can't help but love this woman. But Lucille Ball, or in Lucy, rather, Lucy was not the most reliable or dependent individual. You, you, you couldn't depend on her, right? And so... She was full of mischief, and you loved her, and she was full of fun, but you couldn't necessarily depend on her. And from that, it colored, like, the way I perceived the rest of this suit, you know? I, I gave all of them in this suit kind of those qualities and characteristics. The young, impetuous young kid who's, you know, the one who's probably, you know, jumping off the roof, trying to fly his, you know, imaginary cardboard box airplane or you know the one who's a social butterfly on the beach everybody is drawn to this child male or female um, for that reason too when I see the the knight of batons when he appears in a spread you know I often think of him as the the, the handsome charismatic individual that all the women swoon to the one that you notice and and men too and then one that you notice when he walks into the room but he may not be a long-term <laughs> commitment, you know, because he's not there yet. He's still on his his mission. He's 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 fun. He's dynamic. He's you know sexy. He's all those wonderful things. But you know he might not be real reliable. And Lucy um, could be a woman who you know has achieved um, many things, and maybe she is more inclined to be reliable than she was in her youth but she's a woman who has I think a colorful past and she has some fun stories to tell as is the king he's another individual in the in the ranking right who has achieved the ideal of his suit um, unless in unless you know the queen and king are surrounded by ill suited um, cards you know, maybe water cards surrounding these individuals might be an indicator that they aren't reliable or that there is something about them that they fall short of their mark. But independent and on their own, and if the cards around them are supportive of them, if there are other cards from either the suit of batons or the suit of swords, you know, near them, then you could imagine that they are individuals who have achieved the best of their, of their suit. Um, but clearly the, the king and queen of the suit of batons, I imagine them to be people who have a colorful past and probably have some really fun stories to share. And then the last suit, um, and I'll, I'll use this deck, which is a reasonably modern deck from the seventies. Now, um, even though that this, the suit is represented in this particular deck. This is the Witch's Tarot by Fergus Hall. 
It first appeared in 1973 movie 007 Live and Let Die, uh, and then this deck followed shortly thereafter. Um, I have both versions, but whenever I pull it out for demonstration or for readings, I always use this one because the other one is more rare. But at any rate, um, they have substituted in this deck the pentacles for coins, but I still, when I use a pip style deck that has pentacles, I ignore them and I just interpret them as coins. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to use um, this for coins. I'll just go with, I'll go with this one. Even though I've shown this deck already for one of the other suits, I'm just going to stick with it. Okay, coins. Well, who were the coins? Well, back in the day when the deck was created, it's more than likely that they represented the merchant class, the people who had the money, the bankers. You know, these were the pe people who could afford the finer things in life, which means they were probably formally educated. You know, they had nice homes. And, you know, in today it translates to, you know, in domestic individuals, people who maybe focus on their home life, right? They focus on the importance of education. They focus on the importance of achievement and having nice things, right? So we have, you know, a, a youngster, a valet. Now, as I mentioned across the board, you know, valet and knight can represent messengers because that was their role back in the day. So they could be representative of money coming in or messages regarding money. They could, in the context of a question, just represent an a youngster in the family who's fastidious, maybe the one who has the lemonade stand at age six, you know, trying to earn some money, you know. Um, or this could represent the young gentleman uh, or woman in, um, because if you, you don't necessarily have to, you know, stick to the concept that the knights are always gentlemen, and it, particularly of the suit of coin and cup, they... There's some flexibility there. The, the suit of coins and cups could also, you know, be female in these two roles. Um, but this is somebody who's, you know, maybe the importance of an education, you know, going through college, good with money, maybe a little tight with money. Um, this woman is kind of, you know, uh, you know, maybe, she, you know, I, I think if she's, you know, a domestic kind of individual she may she may be a mother that might be part of you know what you know she might be representative of a woman where a family might be important to her um but certainly she you know takes pride in a home and and making a nice home that doesn't mean she doesn't work and that doesn't mean she doesn't have money because she could be the boss lady i mean this woman's holding her coin and she's got her scepter so she's achieved right she can be a very accomplished woman um, but I think she's also an approachable person. Um, and, uh, you know, and here we have the king of the same suit and, you know, a father type, a fatherly type gives good advice as maybe the queen, um, probably doesn't have a whole lot of skeletons in their closet because they knew what they were about. And they tend to be conservative. In my mind, that's how I see them. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, along the lines of thinking of I Love Lucy, right, and associating her with the card and then it coloring and flavoring the rest of that suit, this kind of did it with me as well, where I would associate when I was learning that the, the king of coin uh, was my dad, you know. He, you know, he had multiple degrees. He was a very educated individual, very smart, um, made a lot of money, <laughs> you know, and, um, uh, and so I, I think of, you know, very conservative, uber conservative, you know, which, you know, may or may not really be who these people are. But I think in my mind that, you know, the suit of coins because of my associations with finding a prototype for one of the one of the cards in the suit right you find a prototype if you find a prototype for the king of this suit then it maybe can flavor who the rest of these individuals are right um and i did have a prototype for um 
I don't think I've used this deck yet, shown this deck, for the, the, the Queen of Cups. No, that was my mom. I associated the Queen of Cups with my mom, and then that flavored the rest of the suit for me, you know? My mom was very emotional. Oh, my God, you know? And um, empathetic, you know? She felt your pain, you know, and she felt your joy. And um, and so that flavored, you know, who these people were for me. And as far as, oh, I haven't shown this deck yet. Um, as far as who, who I used as a prototype for the suit of swords, and maybe, maybe this deck will be good for the suit of swords because they actually are swords. And I'll try to hold them up. Um, in later years, long after I'd been interpreting tarot for many, many, many years, I realized that I married... Um, oh, this is batons. I picked up the wrong one. My bad. Well, I'm going to use this one. Um, I realized I married the... Uh, the king of swords you know my husband is a retired air force officer right united states air force and so um it you know when i when i think of him as a very commanding highly accomplished individual extremely intelligent it really does fall in line with you know these other individuals and how i've always seen them my whole life um, I don't know. I don't remember who my prototype was for the suit of swords. I just don't know. I, I forget, you know. But I did come up with, you know, quick-witted, thinking, agile, smart, um, ambitious, probably one of my cousins. Um, it probably was one of my cousins. And, uh, and that flavored it for me. And then, you know, it sealed it when I, you know, met my husband and um, have been with him, you know, these past 10 years. He really does fall in line with the understanding that I've had of these other characters in the suit of swords. So I hope I didn't ramble on too much and I hope it's been helpful to you. I guess in short, what I'm saying is recognize who these individuals are you know by rank i lost the queen somewhere <laughs> recognize who they are by rank then merge them with their suit have an understanding of what their suit represents if it helps think of one person in your life who embodies the nature of that suit and then if it happens to be the Queen of Swords, for example, let it flavor the rest of the people in that suit, you know? Imagine, imagine the qualities of this person as a child or as a young adult or, you know, as the king or queen that they become. Um, so at any rate, I hope it's been fun for you and instructive and helpful. And until next time, friends, peace and stay well. Oh, and stay tuned because I'm going to have, I think, a really good video coming up over the weekend. And um, I don't even want to give it away what it is. But if you notice the cards in the background. And this one, too. <laughs> um, it's going to be about that. So let your imagine go with you for a little bit and, and uh, until next time, friends, be well.